appropriation license, which means you're welcome to steal anything I've stolen, probably from you already. Uh, just keep in mind, you're just as likely to get in trouble as I am, or not as likely to get in trouble as I'm not likely, uh, or something. Um, to think about a way I wanted to frame what we're here to talk about today, I, I kind of had a bit of a eureka moment when Stuart Brand actually came to UBC about two weeks ago, and I actually got to, to, to actually drink a beer in his presence, which uh, was one of the most exciting moments in, 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 my, in my life. And one of the things that really just kind of hit me was this, which was actually the very first cover of the Whole Earth Catalog. And I don't know if you can read what the tagline was for the Whole Earth Catalog. For those of you who wonder what the Whole Earth Catalog was, it was kind of like a pre-internet version of Google for people who wanted to get off the grid, leave the cities, start their own communities, and basically create their own alternative societies. And the Whole Earth Catalog was an attempt to essentially capture all of the things that people who wanted to do this could use and need. And the tagline for the Whole Earth Catalog, if you can't see it, access to tools, uh, which I thought was kind of interesting. And of course, too, you see the picture of the actual Whole Earth. That, the reason that photograph was made uh, public, by the way, was because Stuart Brand actually lobbied NASA to take the photo and make it. He actually used to walk around with a button. Why haven't we seen a picture of the whole world yet? Um, and so in that concept, though, too, tools isn't just in that sense of a, something like a hammer that works with something. It's in the almost the Buckminster Fuller sense of tools in the sense that these are kind of a whole set of systems. And I would argue that within our particular domain as educators, it's easy to focus on the resources, the content. That's supposedly why we're all here. Um, I would like to propose that we think a little bit broader than that, that we think about something like a global consciousness and that we think about something like access to tools as, as, as significant. And thinking about OER is just a step and towards reclaiming what I think is the mandate of higher education, which is, I thought at one time, uh, to serve as something like, you know, uh, you know, don't we protect free inquiry? Don't, aren't we the guardians of knowledge? Isn't that, isn't that part of the reason we enjoy this uh, uh, privileged space in our respective societies? Is something like that? Um, so let's move along with that. Uh, I have a couple of quotes here, one of which I really like, uh, a description by a guy named Luke Walzer from the United States, uh, describing his own WordPress platform. The, the idea of why they started their own WordPress platform was to gradually integrate into the school's general education curriculum the deep, critical examination of how digital tools are changing the way we think and live. In other words, the actual interaction with these tools is themselves a teaching and learning experience. Which brings us to this wiki I'm showing you. Um, and I'm not going to get too much into the background of it, other than to say we have been having a lot of fun with this wiki. We have really only kind of come out of the closet as you know, out and public and proud wikiers really since this summer. This was more or less a secret project until just this, just this summer. Um, and we've actually hired a wiki gardener, and if anyone is running a wiki platform at your university, consider hiring a wiki gardener. I'd be happy to talk about that with you after the session. Just don't hire our wiki gardener. Um, and we really, it'd be pretty easy because we don't pay him well. Um, so what are people doing on our wiki? Well, they're making courses. And again, keep in mind, we're not, we have not taken this to the community. We haven't been marketing it. This is only the second time we've talked in public about our wiki. Uh, and Novak here is actually the guy who, who knows how it works, uh, and I might let him talk a little later. Um, but already, you're seeing dozens of courses in all sorts of domains popping up. And the wild thing is, we're not teaching them how to do it. They're doing it on their own. You're seeing stuff like this incredible math course coming up, where pretty much every single function of a course management system, forums, FIQs, scheduling stuff, student work happening on the open platform, all happening there. It's all structured. It's all set up on their own. We didn't tell them how to do this. They're figuring it out on their own. Um, in, this, in, in that previous case, it was a faculty user. 
Uh, in this particular case, you're seeing actual student work taking place. The students are actually creating public knowledge resources. For example, on this particular case, uh, someone's created a Wikipedia-like art. Oh, I forgot. I don't have internet. Uh, Wikipedia-like articles on, th on things that are related to the history of the book. And quite good quality, I might add. Um, we're also using it for our own documentation. So within the unit that Novak and I create, everything we are creating is being authored within this wiki environment. So, um, and by the way, it's all eminently takeable by you if you want it. Um, and then we had this main space, which was actually Novak's vision. Novak, I, I argued with him for years about this because I thought it would never work. But Novak had the idea of almost like a Wikipedia for UBC about actual student life. And I actually had, if I had worked in the internet, I would be able to show you things like where students are actually creating articles on things like how hard people party at different residences on campus that allow people to make decisions about which, which, campus, which uh, residences they want to live in. So let's just take a life cycle of one specific resource. This particular, very simple, not terribly exciting, primer on social web tools with a uh, diagram, which I've already seen, I think, twice today. Um, and I think may have something to do with this guy here. Um, so we got this particular little social web tool. Now, because we've, 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 one of the things we've really embodied is this notion of radical reuse. So any piece of content we author, we want it to be able to be republished in as many ways as possible and as easy as possible. So one thing to keep in mind, we actually, even though this looks like one long scrolling page, it's actually six little pages. And if you actually look at the source code of it, we're actually just what's called transclusion, linking six little pages together. Why are we doing that? Well, because, oh, no, I think because I don't have the internet. Why are we doing that? Well, because we want to be able to reuse that content in as many ways as we like. And if we want to repurpose that content somewhere, we don't necessarily want to have to use that entire long scrolling page. We could pick and choose each individual section. So we have two ways of reusing that content within our own framework. One is the wiki embed plugin, which is a WordPress plugin, which is available on the WordPress site. And it allows you to represent any media wiki content in your WordPress environment, and it adopts your, your local look and feel. So I can take this particular, I'm just going to close a couple pages. You can take that old social learning uh, content. I can post it on my own blog. And you'll notice it adopts the local look and feel of my blog. Um, we are also using it on our e-learning information site. And as you'll notice, there's actually tabbed browsing for each of those little sections. Uh, you have that as an option when you put it in your WordPress plugin. You can put it on this, which is actually a student learning site we have. And if you're a really twisted, perverted person, you can even take that content and put it in a WebCT Vista environment. <laughs> and you'll notice it actually adopts the look and feel of your content there as well. Um, how do we do this? Well, just to kind of go back again, there is the plugin. How do you put it in other environments? Every single page on our wiki has, like YouTube, has embed code underneath its videos that allows you to paste your, your videos where you want. Um, we have that embed code attached to every single wiki page, which again, that's partly why we have that transclusion. It allows people to actually take that content and subscribe to it. Now, why do we do that instead of saying just copy and paste our content? Well, in this case, you're not just copying what we have, you're syndicating it. So when we update it, all the downstream uses of that content are, are updated. And we have a, basically, in our kind of little environment, MediaWiki is kind of like the collaborative space we're all authoring in, and that content can be represented any number of ways. And when we make changes in that one MediaWiki environment, those changes are represented everywhere. Um, and with that, I'm going to actually hand it over to someone who knows what he's talking about. Um, while we pass the laptop around, does anyone have a quick question? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. Like. Right. This is the content at the moment, yeah. and 
have a, uh, a permanent link to well, that. Well, within MediaWiki, what you can do actually, and you can do this on any Wikipedia thing, is you can actually link to a specific revision history. Like if you go into the right. history, you can actually link to that specific uh, th moment in time. And actually, we do recommend that for people who are freaked out. At, like, for example, they're representing content on their departmental site. And they're worried someone will come in and vandalize their content and it'll put it on their site and embarrass them. It's never happened, by the way. But um, they do, yes, have that option. You can subscribe to a specific revision history item and whatever happens after that, you're right, won't, won't go downstream. Novak? So, hi, I'm Novak. I work with Brian and a couple other guys from, from UBC. So, uh, I guess the whole point here is uh, we want people to use open, we want people to share, we want people to contribute. But what we figured out after, I guess, a number of years working on this is that people don't like the rigid environment. If we tell them, hey, this is the way, this is the university's way to deal with open, this is the platform we have to use, it's not going to work. So basically the whole point, the whole idea of our work is really making all these tools available. It's almost like a Chinese menu. You have like 30 items on the list. You can choose any five or three or one or 20 that you want put them all together and create a page. So having said that, I'll start with uh, fish. So this is Vancouver's fish company, that about the Greek guy who doesn't have any clue on how to run websites or anything. But because he uses open technologies, he uses WordPress and MediaWiki, he is actually able to create a site uh, and download the plugin that was, that was enabled by us, built by us, one out of over 20,000 different uh, downloads for a number of plugins that we contributed. So we have probably tens, thousands of websites running our plugins uh, that, uh, that may, may makes this thing available, which Brian was showing. So he wants to talk about one product that he runs, which is the sardines. So he can embed information right from Wikipedia while preserving his look and feel about sardines. Uh, so if you want to read more, you can just click on the, let's say, overlay and then load additional information from Wikipedia without losing without ever leaving his site. So basically you can contextualize information anywhere from the web within your own space. Uh, so that was the idea. Uh, there is another example where we combine the Flickr uh, in a project that probably, because I was for a long time in web development, this is like a six digits project. We did it for $2,000. We are combining Flickr, artists are contributing to these cards and, uh, and basically the content is written by scientists at UBC. We could simply imagine that instead of, let's say, this kind of information here, we could have information coming from Wiki. So we can combine multiple places and create different sets of either cards or any kind of games or resources on the web by simply combining things. So I can uh, flip the card, for example, here and read a different kind of information about this. It can be tailored to different audiences, different ages, and so on. Uh, so all of that, again, is kind of leading to kind of our pieces. Brian already mentioned Wiki, and I tried to reload a couple of pages while he was talking. So there is, a, for example, a page, you know, party reputation between two spaces at UBC. So you have a little map there. But then you can take this page and publish on student sites, because students might never end up here. They may end up in their environments, Facebooks and whatever. But then still, because information is here and because it's so easy to republish, you can bring this to their context, what they're familiar with. Uh, I'll quickly go through things. UBC blogs. Blog was in our focus for a long time. Now we are shifting from kind of blo from blogs to, to something called uh, groups, which is actually running on the top of BodyPress. If you're not familiar, that's basically a Facebook for institution with all the good things that Facebook has, minus, oh, I new picture of my dog or whatever. Uh, so we are basically creating a set of functionalities that you can use, blogs being one of them. You can imagine this for your course materials. You can, Im you can run groups, forum, friend people, and so on. It's extremely active space. We have probably 10 blog posts per hour. Uh, in Vancouver now, we are talking about uh, 6 o'clock in the morning, and we had uh, six entries during night. Um, so, so group directory, just to walk you quickly, members directory, uh, blogs directory, uh, and so on. Uh, and the third space is what we call sites. We, uh, as an office, we've taken over CMS for UBC. UBC is huge. We have over 2,000 websites at UBC. Uh, now we have a platform that you can quickly just, you know, within WordPress, move your things around, drag and drop, and create your website that will have a common look and feel from UBC in, in, in literally minutes. And the idea here is we would say, hey, you should use Wiki, or you should use this, whatever technology is. We cannot do that because people want to have ownership. But this is kind of almost like a Trojan horse for these people to go here, 
to use our easy to use tools and still content is managed in, in Wiki, like Brian was showing earlier. So there is an example of, let's say, a portfolio page within, within our e-learning. So all this looks kind of nice within the site. It almost looks like we built it for this, but actually it's just a clickers page on UBC Wiki. It probably won't load, but it gives you an idea. Actually, here it is. So all these tabs that you see here are actually those tabs that are nicely displayed in your website. So you can kind of make this simple, easy to use tools and bring all these pieces together. Uh, so another example, uh, our office, or it can look, because the tool is so flexible, you can be very creative and create the sites any way you like it, and still we kind of give, the, give you one small idea at a time and, and, and hopefully take you to the mo more open, because we r really learned the lesson that you cannot say, oh, hey, this is it. Uh, tools are there, it's just about giving people an easy access to tools, and they'll start combining things, and then the framework kind of grows by itself. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Scott now as well. He's going to type up for a couple minutes. Yeah, um, just very quick, quickly, and, and it, it's a little bit of an aside, but at the same time, I think it reflects some of the themes that you've been hearing here about um, you know, respecting people's existing workflows and the way they want to work rather than making them do something different and using open tools to do that. And um, so I just wanted to show you a, a project we uh, uh, did uh, called F Free Learning uh, and, and relate a little anecdote about how it got created. Um, uh, a few years ago, there was a, a, a blogger who um, uh, wrote a, a blog post just listing, I think, uh, uh, three or four hundred different uh, open content uh, sites uh, uh, for people to go and check stuff. And um, that was fine and dandy, but who's actually going to go through three or four hundred sites? Uh, um, and at this, the, the time this happened, uh, a fellow um, who, if you don't know, I highly recommend you seeking out and finding, uh, uh, named Tony Hurst, um, was uh, doing some investigations around uh, uh, constrained search engines uh, or custom search engines. And um, I, this has also been a pet interest of mine for a long time. And so I uh, sort of put two and two together. And um, the first experiment was to take this list of uh, sites that this blogger put together and using some code from Google, create a dynamic constrained search engine uh, that was wiki-based. Uh, so all the links were listed in a wiki page. Uh, but uh, the Google con uh, search engine was built on the fly by looking on those links and then creating a search engine that searched those sites. And the idea being that people could add to it uh, as they found new things. Um, and so it was just a, a hack. It took about five minutes to do. Um, but I thought, OK, there's a proof of concept that I'd like to take further. And so what that resulted in is this site free learning. Um, this is a WordPress-based site, but behind this is uh, a, a number of different Google co-op uh, search engines that are driven by a, a set of delicious links. Um, so we use a social bookmarking service, and it can either be driven out of an account or out of a tag, so it can be done by a number of people together or by one person running it. Um, you find a new site that's got a resource that you want to add to the index. It's simply a matter of tagging that in delicious, and it just so happens that I'm a delicious user. I I do that anyways. So I thought, well, why don't I just drive the search engine off the things that I'm already finding and storing, right? Um, and so uh, we created this site. Um, uh, uh, so the you know Delicious and, and Google aren't open per se; they're free. Uh, um, WordPress is uh, open and free, and. Uh, in doing this, the other thing that resulted is we had a sort of replicable process that people could take this but use their own set of data uh, and their own set of sites to, and gave this to Brian, who is now running similar sites for UBC. So we now have a model where people who want to do this in their own to have their own branding, their own front end can. So. Yeah, I'm sorry. I meant to preload the page where actually I took the code that Scott developed here and plugged it into our own framework, and it took me all of about 20 minutes to do. Uh, to run my own specialized service. So just to wrap things up, I'm going to skip all the stuff I was going to blab about, but just kind of underline. I mean, OER, great. But what we've chosen to focus on is trying to create really great open source platforms that are as usable as possible, and people don't even know they're creating OER. Um, but we're, we're trying to focus on reusability, ease of use, and just openness as a matter of course. And I would just like to you know, suggest, as people in, in higher education, um, we talk a lot about how is the web changing higher education. I mean, higher education, along with the military, uh, invented the web. Um, 
So, I, you know, and I, and I think it's, it, 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 I just find it dismaying that we have this passive attitude, and why don't we start thinking about how can higher education reshape the web? We do have one set of possible, this was originally in Spanish, by the way, a wonderful poster. I'll find you the original link for those of you in Spain. But, you know, we have one very obvious agenda for what the web might be heading towards, and frankly, I think that's what's happening. Or we can actually think of ourselves as almost like park rangers, creating green space on the web, open spaces based on open source, open collaboration, and with that, uh, we should make space for the other incredible presenters on this uh, session. And thanks for your time.